Praise the Lord. My name is Bishop Ronald K. Harris, the pastor and bishop of the Canaan Baptist Church. And I want to thank you for watching our weekly telecast. And I want to ask you to come out and worship in person with us if you get opportunity. I pray that you enjoy the next encouraging message from the Lord. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of Bishop Ronald K. Harris, we welcome you back to our worship time. We know that you could have told me as well, but the Lord on the steps in the day you were here came. So we're thankful and we're glad to see you. This is the day the Lord has made. Yeah. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Now, in spite of some of the recent tragedies that we've had here in Columbus, Georgia, and around the world, we know that God is still in control. Turn it over and He'll help you make it through. So we thank everyone for being here today. Remember, all scriptures inspired by God and is profitable in our everyday walk in God's divine purpose. Yeah. So whatever you're going through, pick up your Bible, read it. It'll help you on your everyday walk. Yeah. Now, let's have a hallelujah good time in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, Katie. It was another great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Like Brother Jerry Weeb said, it's a great day to be here. And I'm glad to be here myself. Amen. So uh, let's, let, let's praise and glorify our holy Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah, says I let my today comes from Proverbs 18 and 24 and it reads, a man has friends, himself must be friendly but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. May God have blessings on the church. Amen. 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 Thank you. Our Heavenly Father Father we come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Savior. We come this morning my Heavenly Father uplifting thy name praising you Father, giving thanks to you, my Heavenly Father, for aiding us to come together one more time in thy name. Praising, uplifting thy name. Yeah. Thanking you this morning, my Heavenly Father, for looking on us all night long. Yeah. Woke us up this morning in our right mind, yeah. Father. Health and strength, my Father. Able us to get up from our sleeping cot, my Heavenly Father. Walk around, breathe the fresh air for a new day. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for all. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, because, Father, so many were here yesterday, my Heavenly Father, going on today this morning, my Heavenly Father, but you spared us to come together one more time, my Heavenly Father, praising and uplifting thy name, my Heavenly Father. 
Father, we know that you is a mighty good God, my heavenly Father, one that have all power, all power. Father can do anything but fail, my heavenly Father. Father, put that trust in you, my heavenly Father, and you make everything all right, my heavenly Father. Father, we need you, my heavenly Father. I ask my heavenly Father to bless this church, my heavenly Father, in a mighty way, my heavenly Father. Father, I ask just touch somebody hard, my heavenly Father, that don't know you, my heavenly Father, that my heavenly Father, that you is a way out of no way, my heavenly Father. You have all power, my heavenly Father. My heavenly Father, I ask to bless the pastor, my heavenly Father. Crown his head, wisdom, not from on high. Lead that people the way you would have them to go, my heavenly Father. Bless this deacon bowl. Bless all our zeros here this morning, my heavenly Father. Father, let all praise that name, uplift that name, Father, because you are so worthy, my heavenly Father. For all the great things you do in our lives, my heavenly Father. And my Heavenly Father, I know <clears throat> one day, by and by, my Heavenly Father, we ain't going to be able to assemble in this house, my Heavenly Father. Father, I ask my Heavenly Father, when my time come, my Heavenly Father, I ask, <clears throat> just give me a home somewhere. Somewhere in thy kingdom, my Heavenly Father, that I praise your name forever and ever. These men are blessed, and I ask in your name, Father, forever. Amen, amen, amen. Let Jesus lead you, let Jesus lead you all the way, all the way from earth to heaven. Let Jesus lead you all the way. He led my mother, he led my mother, he led my mother, all the way, all the way from earth to heaven, let Jesus He's a mighty good leader all the way, all the way from earth to heaven. Let Jesus lead you all the way. He's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. All the way, all the way from earth to heaven. Let Jesus lead you all the way.
Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just need a little power. <laughs> These are your announcements for Sunday, July the 7th, 2024. First, we'd like to begin by welcoming all of our guests. Now, if this is the first time you're visiting with us, we just want to acknowledge you and let you know how grateful we are that you are here. Amen. Amen. You don't have to stand if you don't want to, right. but if you want to wave your hand, stand, or just sit and enjoy the service, that is okay with us. Amen? Amen. I just want to take a moment to say on behalf of Bishop Ronald K. Harris and we the members of Canaan Baptist Church, we just, we thank you. Amen. You could have decided to go anywhere today, but we're a better people and a better church and we're going to have a great worship service because you're here with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if you're celebrating an anniversary in the month of July, will you please stand? would like to take this opportunity to say happy anniversary to you. Now, if you're celebrating a birthday in the month of July, <laughs> please remain standing and this great choir called Canaan is going to sing to us. Amen. We'll have a choir concert on Sunday, July the 14th, starting at 10 a.m. Amen? Amen. Readers are leaders. Canaan's summer reading program has already begun. Prizes, prizes, and more prizes. See Deaconess Shermaine Broadwater for details. There are cash awards for the first three completed forms. Amen? Amen. We encourage everyone to please contact the church and notify us of any illnesses, surgery, or deaths. We are a church family, and we must continue to keep each other lifted in prayer. Amen. 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 Please invite a family member or a friend to join us for Sunday morning worship service. Um, I was um, asked by um, Brother Long and Sister Phyllis long to say a huge thank you for keeping them lifted up, reaching out to them, praying for them upon the um, funeral for Mr. Strange. Amen. Amen. They are truly appreciative of every act of kindness that they received. Amen. Amen. Please keep our bereaved, sick and shut-ins, college students, military personnel, law enforcement, and first responder service agencies in our prayers. Thank you, and this concludes our announcements for today. Now, if we will, let us prepare to give our tithes and our offerings.
Let us pray. Lord God, you've been so good to us. We love you so much. Lord God, you keep making a way. So now, Lord God, I ask you to prepare our hearts and our minds so that we can render back unto you our tithes and our offerings. Lord God, we believe you. We trust you. We love you and we honor you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.
pray. Lord God, we have done as you have commanded. We have brought our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse. Now, Lord God, we ask that you receive these tithes and offerings and that you allow them to be used for the edification and the building up of your kingdom. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Get right up the mic, fella. Come on, you can do better than that. Wave your hand. If God has done anything for you, I, I'm not asking you to praise him for me. I'm asking you to praise God for who he is. Hey Amen. I pray that you all uh, had a wonderful 4th of July. Amen. Amen. And uh, before we go to the word, I have a special guess in the pulpit. And when someone's in the pulpit, I want you to know who it is. Amen. Amen. And this is uh, my good friend, Minister Wright, and his wife from Columbus, Ohio. He served under my presiding bishop. Amen. Amen. Sister Wright, just give a wave out there. I know you're there. Hey Amen. And I have two of my good friends with me, uh, brother and sister Jordan, um, especially Destiny Jordan. She was with me in Oklahoma, I think, by the time she was maybe nine or ten years old. Amen. Amen. She was saved then and she's still saved now. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Amen. And that is her husband sitting there uh, next to her. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I want to uh, ask you all to keep Brother Buton and Deacon and Deaconess Peyton in prayer. Amen. Um, so good to see Deacon McClendon. He had been in the hospital. I want to get a Lord hand praise for him. Uh, for Mother Mims, our Sister Isoline, uh, Sister Dixon, that we gave them communion last week, and they are doing fine. Amen. And we gave our sister, uh, Deaconess Connie's mother uh, communion, and she was just a, a blessing to my soul. Amen. Amen. And I want you uh, also, if you would, I want you to definitely, definitely keep my sister, uh, Dr. Jackie, in prayer. Amen. And my daughter, Serenity, she's doing fine, and she's ready uh, to get back to church. And I appreciate uh, all of your prayers. Um, and also on another note too, I want you to remember that excuse, um, Sister Carmen Nesson, her mother's home going is Wednesday at one o'clock. Am I right, sis? At Greater Shader Grove Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank all of you who went out for Brother Strange uh, funeral uh, last week. Amen. That's uh, Deaconess and Sister Phyllis back there. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for them. Let me make sure I don't have anything else I want to talk to you about. Amen. And I think with uh, all of that being done, I think we're going to go to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And if you go over to the book of the, uh, Hebrews with me, the 11th chapter, well, I want you to keep uh, Deacon is Patsy Page brother up in prayer amen and keep brother Andrews I want you to keep all of them up in prayer how many of you know we need the covering amen. tell somebody I need the covering, need the covering. And, and how many of you uh, came to church this morning for any other reason except this Sunday is there anybody on the sound of my voice came to church this morning needing something from God and you are persuaded you're not going to leave without it. Listen, this here, the 11th chapter of faith. And today I'm going to talk to you about the language of faith. And I want you to look at verse number three. Hebrews 11 and 3. Are y'all with me? Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen 
were not made of things which do appear. Is that all right? Amen. Now, people, here, here, here's what it is, people. When you come to church, because of the God you serve, knowing who he is and knowing that you're going to where he is should put you in a state of mind to get ready for something explosive to happen in your life. I need some help. In other words, people, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. If you want to come to church to see God move, if you would come in here with a praise in your mouth, a clap in your hand, a stomp in your feet, and a mind that said, I'm not leaving until I get what I want. God will move based on your anticipation. And if you're looking for a miracle, you can get one. If you're looking for a healing, you can get one. If you're going to have problems next week, you can square it away today because you deal with a God who moves in the future. God is looking for a people who's excited about him. God is looking for a people that believe he'll do everything in this book that he said he'd do. God is looking for a people that believe, let it be on earth if it is in heaven. If there's no broke people in heaven, there ought to not be none on earth. Somebody better talk to me here. If you, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hebrew 11 and 3 listen people three points here we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God that, that what is seen is not made of what appears number one he's telling us sister T listen we do not have faith because we understand. We understand because we have faith. And what do we understand? We understand the worlds, W-O-R-L-D-S, plural. We understand that there's two worlds. A physical, visible world that we live in. And then there's a spiritual world a invisible world where all the power lies at nothing happens in your physical world or your physical life unless it first is worked out in heaven in other words listen people let me let me ask you some questions deacon thompson have you ever known a person who had lost a loved one and you told someone uh, I'm going to talk about you getting comfort. Anybody praying with me? Any of y'all ever had a friend go on a long trip? And you talk to them and, and tell them, I hope you make it safe. You ever had a friend who's up for promotion? And you tell them, I hope you get the promotion. People listen to what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Everything that you see in the physical world, when he says uh, that everything is made by the world of God, that, that, that things that are seen are not made from things that appear. What God is saying that everything you see in the visible world was made by the invisible world. Are y'all with me here? So listen now what I'm saying. If that is true, then the power source is in the invisible world. And what I told you was, I said, Deacon Thompson, do you ever talk to a person if they're grieving and tell them you hope they get caught? No, you don't. You do something special. You don't talk. Christians don't talk. You pray. But you don't pray on earth to help them. You turn to an invisible heaven and an invisible God believing that he's going to move on your behalf. Yes, you went all the way to California and back 
I didn't see God protect you, but I know he said in Psalm 91, I will give angels your charge, lease you, dash your feet against the stone. I, I didn't see him protect you, but I know he covered you from the head to the toe in the blood of Jesus. I didn't see how he promoted you, but I know his word says that promotion don't come from the north, they don't come from the east, south, or west. They, they come from God. So what I'm telling you, everything you need is in the spiritual realm. And if you want to change your life in this world, you got to go up there first. You got, you got to go up there first. Now God has made everything available for the Christian that wanted. You can put yourself in a state of mind and say, I'm used to being this way and this is the way I'm going to be to the day I die. That's on you. But I wouldn't waste my time coming here on Sunday paying tithes and coming to Bible study and telling everybody about how strong God is, but I can't depend on him to change who I am. I, I, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to serve a God that I can say he powerful, but I can't prove he powerful. Come on, talk to me in here. People, it's time for you to understand this is your year for your breakout. This, this is the year that you open the curtain on everything you've been wanting. Your best years are ahead of you and you ought to get it wise. You understand what I'm saying here? Everything you need, God has it. If you got joy, you want joy, he got it. Peace, he got it. Love, he got it. If you need a spouse, he got it. You all to pray with me in him. Tell him what God loves. If you need a job, he got it. If you need peace in your mind, he's got it. Is it anybody under the sound of my voice can stand up and say, I have a problem God can't deal with? So God has set everything up for you to get everything. But to receive it, you have to understand how God has caused you to operate in this dispensation. You got to understand, God will give you what he said he would give you if it's in his will for you. But the way you get it is you have to appropriate it by faith. Why faith? Because faith was the original sin. It was the first sin. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, the sin was unbelief. They didn't believe what God said. And because they had unbelief, they died. So God said, the way to bring you back is, I have to reverse the sin that caused you to fall. I'm going to reverse it. You fell because of unbelief, but you can come back because of faith. So faith stands as the highest law in the kingdom of God. Listen to what he says. Hebrew 11 and 6. Without faith, man, it is impossible. You, you, ooh. you can love all day you can be in pain and beg him all day you can sing in the anointing but God can't move until he see your faith because faith is the presiding law of the kingdom faith is your declaration your anthem listen to this people four times Habakkuk Two and four. The just shall live by faith. Yes, Romans 1 and 17. The just shall live by faith. Yes. Galatians 3 and 11. Yes. The just shall live by faith. Right. Hebrew 10 and 38. Right. The just shall live by faith. Yes. But that's what I like about it. Over in Habakkuk, he says, but the just shall live by faith. Yes. And in Hebrew, he said, now. You should live by faith. 
that means your situation has changed. So if your situation is changed, why don't it change now? God is saying, I'm ready to deliver you. I'm ready to give you what you want, but you got to connect with me. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. And how do you connect? People, the only way to connect with God is through faith. Why? Because you're saved by faith. Right. Am I right about it? Right. You, you walk by faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, people, if you don't come by faith, you can't come at all. At all. God said you must believe that I am yes. a reward yes. of those who diligently seek me. Yes. Somebody say it with me. I believe that God is a rewarder of the person who diligently seek him. God said, I'm not hard to find. Whatever you need, I got it. But I want you to find me because I'm a rewarder. Listen, y'all. Faith connects the spiritual world to the physical world. Faith connects you to God. Am I talking right? Listen to this. People, through your five senses, especially your sense of eyesight, it enables you to see the evidence that there is a visible world. If you were blind or didn't have sight, you would not see this world the way a person who has sight would. Would you agree? Faith is the sense that connects you with the invisible world that you can see the evidence of the invisible world. Are y'all with me? Yes. Listen to what I'm saying. You can tell me you have never seen God. Do you understand? Have Harris seen God? It all depends on how you see sight. Because listen, faith lets me know there's a God. Faith is why I preach the word. How can they hear Except they get a preacher. The preacher got to go to heaven to get the right now word that you need. People, listen to me. The invisible world, listen. It's set up that the just, those justified by God, will live a super abundant, overflowing life through faith. Because faith. It's the substance that allow you and I to take hold of the invisible stuff and pull it into the physical realm. I need somebody to pray with me. There's a whole lot of things I need that I don't have. If I'm going to get them by faith, you got to remember this. Whatever required in the kingdom of God, it can only be acquired by faith. It's got to come through faith. If it's going to be a healing, it's coming by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare Brother Butin healed from the top of his head to the bottom of his seat in the name of Jesus. Anybody go pray with me? Now listen, y'all, back here. Substance is something you can take hold of. What God is saying, faith is a spiritual sense that allow you to grab hold of what you want in the spiritual realm. Now listen to this now. Faith is established by God. And it is the substance of things you hope for. But it is the evidence of things not seen. If you understand what I'm saying, I want you to raise your hand if you know, if I don't see it, 
But I got evidence of it. I can go ahead and praise God right now. Did y'all hear what I said? One more time. Faith tell me you don't have it right now. But I've given you evidence that you are going to have it. So go on and praise me right now for it. Listen, y'all. Faith says whatever you don't have uh -huh. is yours. You just need to move it out of the invisible realm so you can put it in the physical realm so you can get your hands on it and use it to your good. But you, you got to believe it. Listen, God has created faith and substance to move before you. Let me tell you what I mean. Your faith, the source of your faith, the object of your faith is God. The source is the word of God. Why? Because listen how faith is transmitted. Romans 10 and 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing. So the word of God explains God's character to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Number one, God is faithful and because he's faithful, we must respond to him in faith. In faith. Do you understand? Yes, How many of y'all know God is faithful? Yes. Is it anybody under the sound of my voice that God said he was going to do it and he changed his mind on you? Raise your hand because we... Okay. So listen now. So okay. So listen. If I believe the word of God, it gives me the foundation to believe God for everything I want. But but I don't I can't just sit back waiting on something to happen. How many of you know faith without effort is dead? Listen now, faith uh -huh. is the substance of things hoped for. Yes, People listen, you got to understand faith. Your faith will not work if you don't tell your faith what you're hoping for. Your faith needs something to go get. Is anybody praying with me? One more time. Faith Cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yes. Now faith is the substance of things what? Oh. So in other words, my faith cannot work unless my faith know what it must produce. Yes, right. It will produce what I want, I'm hoping for. Yes, Do you understand? And it's not faith when you're trying to build something. It's now faith. It's right now faith. It's the substance of things. Are you with me here? Now stay right there and listen now. So it's just like having a dog. And you teach him tricks. And you throw a ball out. And the dog run and get it. God say, use your hope like the ball. Throw it out there. And watch your faith go get it. What is it that you want? If, if you would put what you want in your hope, your faith got something to go get. A lot of us talking about using faith, but you ain't got no hope. You, you say you're using faith, but what you're using it for? And this thing is so right with God, he gives every man... A measure of faith. You don't need the amount of faith I need. I don't need the amount you need. Don't let nobody fool you. He gives us a measure of But he knows we only need a bit about the size of a mustard seed. Somebody say you already gave me too much. Somebody say, you already gave me too much in case I can't handle it. In other words, I don't need but a grain, but he doesn't gave me a. 
Somebody ought to pray with me. Listen, y'all. Uh, uh, listen, y'all. I, I need this much, but he know I'm not going to stick with it, so he... Yeah. Anybody going to pray with me? Yeah. He know that I'm going to get started and I'm going to quit. So he know I only need a grain by the size of the mustard seed, but he's watched me in all these years never finishing it up. So... I got me some faith I can ride in. I got some faith I can relax in. I got some faith to make up for some things. Now, when you talk to your faith, the substance is the word of God. Now, what God is saying is an invisible word. Right now, if I say to you, a Cadillac. You cannot see a Cadillac coming out of my mouth. But I say it, Cadillac. God is saying his word is equal to the manifestation. God is saying if I said it, it's already yours. God is saying you don't have to see it. My word says this. If I told you to speak it, you're going to get it in the physical. That's a law. That is a law. And let me tell y'all something too. How many of y'all know faith works behind it, works with substance? So look at here, Sister Dickens Connie. If you tell your faith I want to overflow my bank account with money. Remember I said your faith works with your hope? Sis, that's what you're hoping for. And you provided the Lord with a container because you told him it was a bank account you wanted to go to. So faith will direct the substance of money to your account. But you got to believe it. Somebody ought to pray with me in here. I don't, I don't feel, I don't got no help in here. Do you understand what I'm saying? People, what I'm telling you is true. Faith will do it. Now for some of you who don't believe it. That's all right. You hang on in there. And God is going to one day put you in a situation. Well, you're going to have to believe it. Any of y'all ever been there before? Any of you kingdom people, any of y'all ever been broke and didn't have no money in your pocket? Well, hold on. I know y'all too proud. I'm going to put both hands up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been down where I didn't have anything. Been down where I needed something. But I still got a God who say he Jehovah Chara. I still got a God that'll say he'll meet my every need. I don't need money in my pocket. To... Okay, let's finish it up. The language of faith. A language is a communication system among a group of people or a community. You got to learn to speak the language of faith. You ought to pray with me. Let, let me tell you some words in the language of faith. Uh, words like faith, evidence, seen, unseen, hope, calling those things that be as though they're so. This language excludes certain words. We cannot say, I can't. Because faith says, I can do all things to. Do you understand where we're going here? I can't say I'm not loved. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Are y'all with me? Huh? I can't say I'm the black sheep of the family. I can't say my parents didn't love me. I can't say none of those things because God loved me so much he adopted me into his and it's a big difference between a person being 
fostered and one being adopted. Adoption means he had to choose me. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're going home. The language of faith. A time came in the patriot Joshua's life. He had took over from Moses and over in the sixth chapter of Joshua, the Lord is talking to Joshua and they are looking at the most fortified most difficult city during that time to penetrate the walls to get in. And guess what God tells Joshua? Y'all ready? See, I have given Jericho, the kings, and all the men of valor to you. But when Joshua is looking at the city, it's still as strong as ever. Tell somebody faith means I got to see it the way God sees it. Let me go here with you. How many of y'all know when God came to the world and created it? It was in chaos. It was in confusion. And he spoke the word and put it in order. God is saying, you don't like the world you living in? Change it. Take the word of God, take faith, and turn this thing all the way around. You don't have to live the way you live it. You don't like it, change your life. And you change it by believing. So now listen, Joshua, before he get the city, y'all, he has to see what God said. Are y'all with me? Here's the most fortified city in the world. And the Lord tells him, see, I've given it to you. But it is standing stronger than it's ever stood before. He's got to believe it before he see it. Go ahead and tell somebody, faith me. I got to believe it before I see it. Good God Almighty. When I believe it, then I see it. You see it if I believe it. Listen there. Destiny, he told God, said, I want you to tell these boys for seven days, this is what you're going to do. Go around the city one time for six days. But on the seventh day, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to need you to go around that city seven times. And on that last turn, I want the priest to sound the trumpet and the other priest to sound the ram horn. And when they do that, Deacon Abba tell all the people, he didn't tell them just to shout. Here you go read it. He said, I want them to make a great shout. Anybody go pray with me? Listen, y'all, all of them could not be the priest. All of them couldn't play instrument. All of them couldn't sing. But every last one of them could lift their hand and shout for the Lord. Listen what the Bible says. And when they shouted, the walls didn't fall down. Go read your Bible. They collapsed. Now here it is, people. The substance of their faith was their faith to shout. You hear me? What caused the wall to fall, they believed God would do it. They followed his instruction. But their portion of the wall falling, their substance was they had the faith to shout. What I'm trying to say in here, church, you got to learn sometime how to shout your way out of something. Some of you make a whole lot of loud noise, but you make it for the wrong reason. Have you ever got mad enough, sick and tired enough, that you just had to shout? God said if you want the mountain to fall, shout it out. God said if you want deliverance, shout it out. God said you want to come out of this path, you need to shout it out. 
you got to get desperate. You got to get like the woman with the issue of blood. Any of y'all ever been out there by yourself? You've been suffering with over cancer for about 12 years. You bleeding and you done spent all your money trying to get healed. But there's people with these church rules that say, I got to do this and do that to get to Jesus. But this woman knows Jesus was the type of God. All you got to do is have faith. All you got to do is work through the crowd. And last week, Minister Steve said that the oil will flow from the head yes. to the beard yes. down to the hem yes. of the garment. Yes. So the strongest concentration of the anointing is called in the hem of the garment. Yes. This woman knew that over in the book of Malachi, it said that when Messiah come, he'll have healing in the hem of his garment. So she got down on her knees, bleeding to death, walking forward, and said, if I just could touch the... Raise your hand if you touched him. Come on, raise your hand if you touched him. Raise your hand if you touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory! We're gonna get ready for a communion. Yeah, I got it. Tell him I gotta have it. Tell him I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna turn my thing around. I'm tired of playing this game here. I'm tired of reading what he'll do, but he won't do it for me. And I know he's not a respectable person. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I want you to prepare yourself for, to perceive the most holy communion. Go ahead and tell the Lord, thank you. I'm going to tell you, I, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Anybody going to pray with me here? I feel the anointing. How many of y'all know what the anointing of God is all about? Raise your hand if you got his anointing. And this last time I say we are going to communion, I want to share this with you. Sometimes when you're trying to get what God needs you to get, you need a real good friend that you can trust. I'm not talking about no, not talking about no woman who'll mow the mouth, who can't keep nothing. I'm not talk about her. Do you understand that? I'm not talking about no foolishness. But you need somebody you can trust. And let them be your accountability partner. Let's say, for instance, you say, look. I'm trying to lose weight. Tell that person about it. And when you see them losing weight, encourage them because they're going to try harder. If you see them getting bigger, encourage them. You accountability problem. You want to pay off your debt? You find somebody. Now, listen, y'all. I know what you say. As long as I got Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Unfortunately, that ain't what Jesus said. Jesus said we need one another. Jesus said if a man falls, it's better to have two there. Come on, talk to me. How many long ranges under the sign of my voice? You go do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. To do it by yourself is to fail. God didn't do it by yourself. He used his son and the Holy Ghost. And people, when you're trying to make change in your life, I want you to listen to this. Bad things always seem to start happening to you when you are making the change. You got to push forward. The only reason this difficulty is coming in your past, you have quit. As soon as you made up your mind to get it, once adversity came, after about four or five times you put it in your mind, every time I try to get saved, people in my family start dying. Every time I try to do this, people lose jobs. That's just a trick of the enemy. Tell somebody I got to keep going. I got to keep walking. Tell them I got to press my way on. Tell them I got to get an attitude. 
tell him I got to swing my arms. Because the devil ain't just going to move. God ain't never told me I had to be nice to him. God never told me I had to respect him. Sometimes you got to elbow. Sometimes you got to chop. Sometimes you got to kick. You got to get what God has for you. Please hang in there. When you are that close to what you want, the enemy will speed up the attack to hurt you, to hurt people in your family. But if you hang on, stay steadfast and unmovable, you will get what you want. And when you get it, God will heal everybody the devil tried to hurt because of you. Let us prepare to partake of the most holy communion. And if there's anyone out there who needs the elements, please raise your hand that we can serve you the elements of communion. Amen? Amen. Now listen, y'all. Paul said... In 1 Corinthians, you ought to take communion word. Does that mean if you mad at somebody, you don't cuss somebody out. They've done you wrong. You need to seek forgiveness or forgive them so that you can take communion the right way. Are y'all with me here? So at this time, closing your eyes. If it's anybody here that's got an alt with their brother and sister right where you are, get it right before you take communion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we ready? Has everybody been served who desire to partake of communion? We read that deep. Okay. On the same night, in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, he said, this is our body, let us see, please. In like manner, he took the cup, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, let us drink. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he return, let us pray. Glorious Father, in the name of Jesus, we take a moment to just thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. Father, we thank you for the opportunity of participating in the highest form of worship, being your holy communion. We ask that you would bless the tithes and offers and gifts that your people have given, that they will be used to expand your kingdom. And Lord, we pray for the people of the Canaan Baptist Church, that they would live a victorious life every day of their lives. Show them, oh God, they have value and they have worth in your kingdom. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and the church say it. Amen. Amen. Minister. Will you open up the door for me? Take an hour. At this time, you doing all right? I am. We would like to give okay. the church an opportunity. If there be one that feels that they're outside of the ark of God's sake, they want to turn your life over to Christ Jesus, you want to open up the door to the church. I want to show you something about that they care. Hello. Hey, you man. You doing all right? How you doing, brother? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I went a long time today, didn't I? You don't think so? I got to go back up and get her. Amen. Amen.
We have Vanessa Whitfield. She has come to be baptized. She believes that Jesus is the Amen. Amen. Hey, grown folks. Gang members do more for people when they join a gang than Christians are do. Won't you stand on your feet? You praying for young people to stop killing one another. And here's a young person trying to get saved. And you're sitting down just because they're not grown. I don't like to do it. Now also, now this is, come on honey. Now this is the little preacher who preached on Father's Day. Y'all ought to come talk to me. This is the one who was preaching up in the pulpit like she's been preaching 30 years. People get excited about our young people. Minister, turn up. Bless you here. My partner over here. You doing all right? Look over there. As we grow in love. Bless you. How you doing? Bless you. How you doing? Thanks for coming. Thank you. A family always there to be strong and to lean on to be strong yes. Uh, yes amen amen glory hallelujah all minds are clear will you stand with me Amen. Let us pray to be dismissed. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, Hello, gracious Lord. and eternal Father, our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings. Yes. Father, we have come and assembled in the house of God and yes. house of prayer, Father, one more time to receive your Father. Let not one heart leave from this house, Father. Go empty, Father. But be filled with the love and the joy that you place within us each and every day. Now, Lord. Touch our minds and our hearts. Bless the sick amongst us. Bless those that are just going through the trials and tribulations of life. Walk with us and keep us is our prayer. Now unto him who is able to present us and keep us from falling, to present us faultless to the only wise God, be honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.